Hello, and welcome to Coast 101, an introduction to coastal Louisiana that covers how the coast was formed, the challenges we face from the rapid loss of our wetlands, and the strategies and projects that are being used to address those challenges. I'm Corey Miller, Director of Community Resilience for the Coalition to Restore Coastal Louisiana, or CRCL for short. Beginning in 1988, CRCL was the first statewide nonprofit dedicated to raising awareness about our land loss crisis and driving solutions that will allow us to hang on to as much of our coast as possible into the foreseeable future. We do so through a combination of outreach, advocacy, and boots on the ground, volunteer restoration. But enough about CRCL. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on over to Taylor to take it away. We hope that you enjoy. To give you guys a little introduction on myself, I was born and raised here in Louisiana. I fish here, hunt here, and that is one of the main reasons I really want to work hard to conserve our waters and our land. And we're going to jump right into the introduction to coastal Louisiana. To start, I want to show you guys the drainage basin of the Mississippi River. The river drains 41% of waters in the United States, including 31 states and two Canadian provinces. Why is this important? Well, 8,000 years ago, this is what Louisiana's coast looked like. The areas where New Iberia and Prairieville now stand were not yet dry land. In the next series of slides, I want you all to focus on the timeline in the upper right corner, as well as these four cities, which are marked by stars, to see how they were formed by the river. Think back to the image of the river basin. Mud, sand and sediment traveled from the other states down to Louisiana and during annual flood periods that sediment was deposited along the coast which built up the land that we know today. So if the river helped build Louisiana, how did we get to the current state of land loss? As many indigenous tribes have done before, Europeans settled along the river for trade, easy navigation, and rich soil. However, they did not account for the flood seasons. When the river would flood, so did their homes and their surrounding land. How did they overcome this? That's right, by building levees. The Army Corps of Engineers built the levee system which we know today after the Great Flood of 1927. Everything in the red lines represents the levee system. And along the Mississippi River, these lines are bolded and a lot closer together. So that is important because if you look towards the west at the Atchafalaya River, the lines are thinner, which shows that they're further apart from the river, which creates a floodplain, which can accommodate for more water during flood periods, which is great for land maintenance. Before the Mississippi River levee system was put in, the river constantly created land, but now that sediment is being directed to areas that don't need it, we have starved wetlands. Where you see these plumes of mud, it shows the sediment from the river. Sediment flows out of the mouth of the Atchafalaya and Mississippi rivers. This image was taken also when the Bonnie Carey Spillway was open because you can see that there's a plume of sediment over there as well. We need the sediment in areas that are losing land to help build up the land naturally again. In this next section, I will talk more about challenges to our system which contribute to land loss. Humans have cut channels for oil and gas exploration along with navigation throughout our coast. Anytime you see a straight line in the marsh, it is man-made. The construction of these channels allowed saltwater to penetrate freshwater ecosystems and provides greater opportunity for erosion. To better understand, imagine you have a block of solid ice and a bag of cubed ice. Which of these will melt faster? The smaller pieces, obviously, because there is more surface area. Just like the ice, if the marsh was whole, it would take longer for it to erode. 
With many small individual chunks of land, there are more edges which erode faster. Remember the Mississippi River drains 41% of the United States. Well, with all that drainage comes sediment which gets blocked behind upriver dams. Louisiana is a deltaic system, and these systems result in soil which subside over time. Without the annual input of sediment into our systems, there is nothing to counteract that subsidence. Soil is like a sponge. When it gets wet, it expands. But once it dries out, just like soil, it'll shrink and compact which can cause potholes and cracks in the cement. Sea level rise combined with subsidence gives Louisiana the fastest rate of relative sea level rise in the world. All that means is that as water is rising, we are also sinking. Wetlands reduce storm surge from hurricanes, but if the wetlands aren't stable, hurricane winds can tear them up. This image right here is from before Hurricane Katrina and Rita. Take a close look at the land, nice and green, around New Orleans and Lake Pontchartrain. Now we have an after image. As you'll notice, the land that was once there is now gone. You can see how much damage hurricanes do to our coastal wetlands. Remember how navigation channels contributed to land loss? Well, this arrow is pointing to the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet and during Katrina, it acted as a direct path for the storm surge to hit New Orleans. We also encounter invasive species, which are detrimental to our coast. First, there is the nutria rat. Nutria eat plant saplings, which negatively impacts our wetlands because we need plants to stabilize and hold our soil firm. Without nutria and with more plant saplings, it'll be harder for hurricane storms to rip up our marsh. We also have wild hogs that tear into levees and forests. And most recently, we've seen cases of the Roseau cane mealybug in Plaquemines Parish, which has wiped out the wetlands areas. All of this means that we have a lot of work to do to, which counteracts the causes of land loss because we do stand to lose a lot more land without action. This image represents land loss in Louisiana from 1932 to 2010. The red represents land loss, which shows in areas that is equivalent to the size of Delaware. The green represents where land is being gained or maintained, which is generally around the mouths of the rivers where sediment is being poured out. With our coast eroding, saltwater moves closer inland, and as this happens, freshwater species like crawfish, bass, and the black bears will have to find new areas to live. This will not only negatively impact species themselves, but it will have an impact on fishers and Louisiana's seafood economy. In this next section, I will begin to highlight what is being done to maintain and build land in Louisiana. The multiple lines of defense strategy identifies a system to reduce flooding for coastal communities through natural landscape features found in a healthy estuary and engineered structural features such as levees and floodgates. The first line of defense consists of environmental and ecosystem restoration. This consists of natural land-like barrier islands, sounds, land bridges, and natural ridges. Our second line, is made up of structural flood protections, which are man-made steel or concrete structures that help keep water out. For example, levees, flood pumps, floodgates, and highways. Our last means of defense are non-structural adaptations, which are things that residents and homeowners can do, like elevate their homes or evacuate during storms. We need these multiple lines of defense to protect our coast and homes. The Louisiana Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority is an interagency organization which works collaboratively with other organizations, the Coalition to Restore Coastal Louisiana being one, to create a master plan every seven years. The master plan has two main goals, to reduce flood risk and build and maintain land. Here is a map that shows areas where projects are being implemented through the state in southeast Louisiana, there are more projects because of the Mississippi River and levee system. On the west, most projects are focused on shoreline protection and marsh creation. 
For a more detail of this map, check out CPRA's website for an interactive view. Our land loss crisis is not caused by one problem and cannot be fixed with one solution. I will be running through different restoration project types and keep in mind that none of these work on their own but are used in concert with other projects to produce the best outcomes. First, I will go over projects which alter the water. Here we have freshwater diversions, which are just diversions designed to capture more water and less sediment. These structures bring fresh water from the Mississippi River and divert it to areas that were once freshwater habitats and saltwater has now taken over. Don't get this confused with the Bonacary Spillway. That purpose is strictly to control floodwaters. Hydrologic restoration projects are very important to ensure other restoration projects are successful. We have lost the fresh end of our estuary and the wildlife that lives in that ecosystem. These structures control the flow of salt or fresh water into an area. In the western part of the state where we do not have the benefit of the river, maintaining the correct salinity balance is essential. The next project types alter the land. Shoreline protection help break wave energy before hitting the shore. Here in this picture, rocks are used to buffer waves, which you can tell by looking at the water in front of the rocks that is very rough and behind the rocks, the water is calm. These projects help slow erosion. Another shoreline project uses oyster shells to create that same buffer. Using oyster shell creates habitat for living oysters and other species. One huge benefit of the reef is that it grows vertically, meaning that oysters will grow on top of each other. So as sea level rises, so will this reef. Thinking back to our multiple lines of defense strategy, the first line we need are barrier islands, which knock down wave energy against storm surge. Barrier islands are also used as nesting and resting sites for migratory birds. The next projects I will mention, including this one, use sand which is pumped or dredged from borrowed sites to rebuild their structures. Many of the completed restoration projects are barrier islands that can help protect future projects further inland. Ridges are naturally the result of sediment piling on the edges of bayous and distributaries. These are high places along a marsh where trees can grow, and they are an important element for a healthy coastal ecosystem. This image shows a successful ridge and marsh creation in Bayou Grand Liard within the Bears Area Basin. Marsh creation projects are very effective at building land quickly. These projects use dredged sediment to build marsh platforms, but because of subsidence, this newly created marsh begins to subside almost immediately without the annual input of natural sediment. We need sediment diversions to help sustain these marsh creation projects. Remember how the Mississippi River used to deposit sediment throughout the coast, which built up Louisiana? Well, sediment diversions will be structures built in the levees that will help mimic the natural process of the river by pulling sediment from the Mississippi and diverting it to those areas of starved sediment. There are currently no sediment diversions in place, but these diversions are a keystone of coastal restoration in Louisiana. As mentioned previously, we can keep creating new marshes, but without sediment, they will continue to subside. Here you can see an image which represents why we could still lose plenty of land. The green areas show where we have gained and maintained land, and it just means that it is essential that we implement the coastal master plan. All right, well now I'm gonna hand it over to Hannah and she's going to tell you guys more about how the Coalition to Restore Coastal Louisiana is essential in coastal restoration and what you can do to help restore Louisiana. Hi, I'm Hannah Cohen, the Community Engagement Associate at Coalition to Restore Coastal Louisiana. CRCL helps implement the Coastal Master Plan by focusing on our mission and vision to drive bold, science-based action to sustain a dynamic coastal Louisiana through engagement and advocacy. The next slides will show you what CRCL is doing throughout the state to stand by our mission and vision. Our habitat restoration program focuses on three main types of restoration, 
There are marsh and dune plantings where volunteers come out and help us plant grass species that will stabilize the soil and protect neighboring areas against storm surge. We also engage volunteers with our coastal forest restoration, where we plant bald cypress, tupelo, and maple trees back into forests that were devastated by salt water. When we plant these trees, we use nutrient protectors to prevent this invasive species from eating the roots. We also do beach restoration projects when, where fencing is installed to catch sand as a barrier against storm surge. We also have an oyster shell recycling program. CRCL partners with these restaurants throughout New Orleans to collect their used oyster shell and put it back to our coast. Pictured are some volunteers at our shell curing site where we bag the shell and place it in cages before it's taken out on barges to be used as shoreline protection. Since 2014, we've collected nearly 10 million pounds of oyster shell. If you wanna support this program, you can eat at these restaurants and volunteer to bag shell with us. To make sure that our projects are working properly, we have a monitoring team that goes out to each site yearly and documents our progress. Here you can see the before and after of a beach restoration in Grand Terre. We also use drones to monitor our projects. Here we have a tree planting in Manchac. On the left, you can see what the forest looked like before volunteers came out. And the drone image on the right shows what the area looked like after 500 trees were planted a year later. Every two years, CRCL hosts the State of the Coast Conference, which consists of two and a half days of presentations by leading experts, keynote speakers, posters, and networking. Scientists, landowners, federal and state agency personnel, and other attendees gather to exchange relevant information on the dynamic conditions of Louisiana's coastal communities, environment, and economy. We also engage with college students through our ambassador program, where we're represented on college campuses, and our ambassadors help to recruit volunteers, table at events, and they get to network with professionals in the field. Our Future Coastal Leaders program recruits high schoolers to join a cohort of engaged coastal advocates. It aims to inspire and support the next generation of coastal restoration professionals through education, workforce development, field trips, networking opportunities, and more. If you care about Louisiana's coast, there are so many ways to get involved. You can become a CRCL member, volunteer at one of our restoration projects, sponsor a project of your own, or engage with your decision makers. You can write letters to the editor or ask CRCL to speak to a group. Remember to talk to your friends, family, and colleagues about coastal restoration, and you can make a difference. Thanks so much for watching this presentation. If you have any questions, you can email us at coalition at crcl.org. To learn more about what we do at CRCL and how you can get involved, visit us at crcl.org and follow us on social media.